Today on Film Riot, we take a look at how we made our latest short film, Chainsaw. Welcome to Film Riot, the show that takes mystery out of the effects and techniques. Go and send your favorite Hollywood films. I'm your host, Ryan Conley. And if you haven't seen it yet, stop what you're doing and go watch our latest short, short, Chainsaw, right here. Click here and go or go to the link in the notes section because spoilers ahead. Also stick around until the end to find out how you can enter our giveaway where we are giving away over $40,000 worth of filmmaker goodies, including a laptop and an Ursa Mini 4.6K camera. I know, but that's later. We only had one day to get this short done, so the second we got to the location, I grabbed Chris Adams, who was my DP on Chainsaw, and we walked the location to figure out the best place to stage the scenes. The main thing for me was having an area where the wides could feel open and the overs would feel more closed in and tense, especially Anthony's side. I needed to have something behind him so that visually he feels trapped. That way you're not distracted from the moment wondering why he didn't just run straight back. Then we went out to the street. Our 180 was dictated by the wide shot that we needed to get. Since we had the field on one side, there really was only one option for where it could be filmed. So the rest was just deciding screen direction. In the end, I had Anthony's character going left to right when he was cornered and about to die. Then we flip it on him and have it going right to left when he's headed towards safety. It ended up just being another way to visually change his situation. But the first shot up for the day was that wide shot. Action! Since Chris and I wanted to shoot while there was still a little bit of light left in the sky, that way we would have some depth and it wouldn't just be pitch black. So everyone went right to work setting up and my actors went right into makeup, which for our villain was a lot easier than you might think. The special effects makeup on his face wasn't makeup at all, but a silicone mask from CFX. And this thing is amazing. It looks so brutal on camera and it is unbelievably simple to maintain. Our actor Nick could just take it on and off whenever he needed a break. And it was really the only way that we were gonna be able to get the gruesome over the top look that I wanted since having prosthetics like this done would have been too costly and would have taken way too much time in production as well. My makeup artist Heather Henry did a great job on Nick's hands to match the look of the mask and added a bit more blood on the mask as well. I mean I'm not trying to hit on Nick but you're looking pretty handsome. Then while that was going on, we had our balloon light getting set up, which is how we pulled off our moonlight. It's this giant balloon about 16 feet long with several of these bulbs inside. They pop those in, fill it with helium, and then we make our own moon. We're making our own moon! This whole thing is full of lights! We're gonna shoot it in the air and make our own moon! There are all kinds of shapes and different versions of this setup that you can get, but we had a sausage balloon light that our tech was able to anchor down with ropes and floated about 40 feet or so, which gave us a really solid throw of light to get that very important wide shot, which is really the whole punchline. Without that shot, the whole thing wouldn't work 100%, so it was really important for us to get a very wide area lit up. We rented ours from Airstar, so if you're interested in something like this, there you go. We also had an outdoor fogger for the scene so we could get a bit of atmosphere in there, like you see in the wide here. We had someone out for that specifically to man the fan and fogger and keep a consistent flow of the fog throughout the piece. It was really important to have someone dedicated to that job alone since it's very difficult to keep fog in any area in an uncontrolled environment. But of course, at this point we were running behind and clearly weren't gonna get our shot off in time to get that horizon Chris and I wanted. So when the sky was looking how I wanted, I ran over to the camera and rolled for a few seconds. That way, later in post, I could take that shot and lay it over the one I got with our actors playing out the scene, and there we go. And I did this right inside a premiere. I just laid the horizon shot over the one of my actors Actors, dropped the opacity, masked around the sky, and feathered. And although it's very subtle, you can see how much of a difference it makes. Instead of that flat black sky, we have a little bit of detail and color that's adding a whole lot of depth. After that, we moved right into our running shots. We did this by strapping Chris down to the back bed of the truck. Once set in the back bed of the truck, we ran the shots over and over because even though we were able to light a large area with the balloon light, that distance wasn't so long once we were running. So I had to have Anthony do it a few times. <laughs> But I'm sure he didn't mind. Brother's a god monster. You want to know what you want to know what the real the real boogeyman of this horror movie is? 
It's your nightmare brother. I felt like I was in Dr. Zhivago. After finishing that and grabbing the villain's walking shots, it was time to move to the backyard for the opening scene, which at this point, we were pretty behind. We should have been in the backyard about two or three hours earlier than we were, but I'll get to that after we pay some bills. If you're a budding filmmaker, entrepreneur, or innovator, Domain.com is a place to go when that next idea hits you. I know you've heard me say that the list of available domain extensions is growing, but you now have the opportunity to name your site and build your brands in ways that was never before possible. You can choose from a growing list of 400 plus domain name extensions like .com, .org, .design, and .club. And they give you some love and they're giving you 25% off their already affordable prices when you buy domain names, web hosting, and email. Just use the coupon code FILMRIOT at Domain's checkout. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Logo. So again, by the time we got into the backyard, we were already pretty behind. So much so that I was concerned we weren't even gonna make our day. So right away, while everyone was setting up, I went through my shot list and cut a ton of shots and made a must-have list, knowing that if we could shoot it out fast enough, that we could get back to wish list stuff. To pull this off, Chris lit the scene so that we could just jump around without having to do any relights. So once he had it lit, it was all just shooting. Then I planned all my must-have shots with triangle coverage, which we've talked about on the show before. It's just a wide and then an over of one subject and then a reverse over of the others, which I split into three sections, the villain attacking until Anthony falls, then Anthony backing up on the ground until the chainsaw stops, and then the rest of the scene as the third section. Doing that made it really simple to knock everything out and let us move quickly while keeping everything organized in my head since I was doing it in those sections. For the chainsaw in the scene, we had two of them, one with the chain on and one with the chain off. So if we ever had a close up, it was the hero chainsaw with the chain on. But whenever Anthony was in the shot and the chainsaw was being swung at him, it was the version with the chain off, just adding a much needed layer of safety. Even when Nick was swinging at Anthony, I made sure that there was a very safe distance between them, so although it looks dangerous, he's really at least two feet away. And in this wide here, since the area that we decided to shoot in was a last minute adjustment, the porta potties that we had on location were actually in the shot originally, but that area was so dark already that our guys were able to black it out and dress it so that you couldn't tell what it was or even see it at all. They camouflage them because apparently they, uh, or in the shot. But after I got my triangle coverage, we moved into our specials, which were close-ups of the chainsaw that I needed, extra close-ups of Anthony, and my opening moonshot, which is pretty much a full VFX shot minus the chainsaw. Here's what it looked like originally. We shot it like this so that we could get a realistic light wrap around the chainsaw with the bounce right behind it, which of course is just a stop sign bounce that we showed how to build in this episode right here. A great light to use for this would be my Aperture COB 120T, which is my single point LED light from Aperture. What's great about a light like this is that it's super bright and it's battery powered, so you can throw on a gold mount or V mount depending on what you have and there you go. Super helpful when you're in the middle of nowhere. But to get the chainsaw to come up in frame and land right where I wanted it to, I just started with the chainsaw in its final position and then just moved it out of frame. That way later in post, we could reverse the footage and have a perfect move. After that, we grabbed a few final bits of coverage and we were done. All right guys, that's a wrap. That's a wrap on this picture. Woo! And that's it. This one was pretty straightforward, but a whole lot of fun. And if you haven't heard, we're giving out a ton of awesome filmmaker giveaways. If you want a chance at some, all you have to do is tweet or Facebook out a link to our film Chainsaw and use the hashtag Bloodtober. And that's it. We're picking three winners every Friday for the next three Fridays. To get all the details on that, watch our giveaway video right here and make sure you check out our site, filmriot.com. Also, we've released a digital download pack for our Chainsaw short film. Inside this pack, you're gonna get a higher quality version of the film, an hour long onset experience where you get a very intimate look at what it was like to make the film with us on set. Then a watch with Ryan, which is my version of a director's commentary. In this, I watch the film, pause it, rewind it, and talk about my process for making it from start to finish along with BTS images and video to go deeper. Then we also have a first draft of the script, which was originally a five minute short film that was very different than what we ended up with. The shooting draft of the script, some raw ungraded images so you can mess around with color grading, and an animatic versus final film comparison. So if you're interested in getting that, go right here to check it out. Links to all of the above are also in the notes below. But that's it and I'll see you guys next week when we release another short film called Ghost House.